All right, you guys, what is going on? In a strange turn of events, we are out here about an hour outside of Tokyo, Japan at Daigo Saito's shop. When you feel it's hopeless, when you think that you lost, oh, I will take your hand and we'll rise up from the dust. Oh, here we go, 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 let us see a lane grow. You won't be alone, we're unstoppable. Don't be afraid to show what we're going for. This is what we know. Here we come back to life, we're still breathing. Standing up, everybody's gonna see it. Oh, all you need to know is that we're holding on. Even if we fall, we will rise up. It is absolutely ridiculous here. Thank you, Sky, so much. We're here with Sky. It's my first time in Japan, as you guys know, and these things just kind of happen. I find myself, you know, you go to a location, you start meeting people, and then the ball starts getting rolling. And you exactly, know. yeah. So I really appreciate you bringing us out here today. No problem at all. Yeah. So as a friend of Sid, and uh, good to meet you, Marcus, this time. And uh, I have to say, you know, like this is a beautiful place, and I have to bring you guys to come have check it out. Absolutely. Okay. So we're gonna go take a look around. Oh, they're working on a few cars in there. There are a bunch of Supras, some crazy stuff. Um, I know you know a lot more than I do personally about a lot of his builds and kind of the history of uh, what he's been doing in the sport and what he's done for the sport. Um, 100%, yeah. So let's go check it out. Right, let's check it out. Obviously, here's the new Supra. Rocket Bunny. Rocket Bunny kit. Rocket Bunny Super kit. Obviously, completely fresh on the market uh, for 2020. There's no such drift car anywhere else in the world. No. And then <laughs> it just happened he has everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Personally, my favorite thing about these cars, it's hilarious because everybody's been bagging on the new Supra. Oh, it's a BMW, right? Um, but. Look under the hood, it's a 2JZ. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. So first thing, the small motor was pulled out and you know, basically there's a full competition car. Mm -hmm. Shoot back to the bare chassis. Yeah. And really, you know, just having the 2JZ, that's, you know, whatever the package that works. Um, so in his previous car, tech win Formula Drift USA and he ran the 2JZ. So that's why he know how to build his motors. Uh, with handling wise, We've got a Vice Fab, which is famous brand who, you know, builds the angle kit for all the pro drift cars. So he got a formula right there, and it should be a winning package. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like you take the new chassis, the new chassis dynamics, um, and everything like that, the modern stuff. But the 2JZ has been proven over and over and over again, right? So, yeah. and I mean, we you guys have seen me drive 2JZs on the channel before, and there's so many ways to do it. But you know, in a drift car like this, that, that's what you want. You can get big, reliable power. 100%. And yeah. there's parts everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. If you check out that turbo size, it's massive. So <laughs> this thing is not short of power. For sure. No, yeah. no. Open wastegate yeah, out the, the wastegate. hood. Yes. Super tidy. All his car like super, super tidy. Oh yeah, of um, course. There's, I keep there's forgetting. nothing that you know you don't need. Yeah. So if you check it out, it's got a nice cockpit, um, digital dash, carbon fiber dashboard everything mm -hmm. um, nice seat hydraulic handbrake sequential shifter yeah right over there so yeah it's like beautiful car absolutely so i mean everything has been thought of here yeah a lot of people say oh this is too nice to drift but that's probably a lot of people will think yeah but actually that's what pro drift car these days is going to be you know it's if you look at the gt3 race car and this mm -hmm. car is probably even higher level higher power handling wise but it's especially made for drifting. Yes. So it's, it's a pro car. Yeah. If you look at the carbon roof, how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, do you, do you know if they got like pre-production cars through Toyota at all, or was this just as soon as the car hit the market, they got started working on it right away? Uh, the deal started quite early on, mm -hmm. and oh, obviously. Oh, lunch? Lunch, lunch. No, you want? Okay. No, so Daigo san just asked to go lunch. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Daigo. As you may have guessed, Daigo's shop is not the only drift-obsessed team on the block. As we took off for lunch, we actually ran into some more friendly faces from the Japanese drift world. I'm talking about Shinji and Masayo Minawa. 
a pair of pro drivers competing in Formula Drift Japan with this robust collection of JDM builds. This year will be Shinji's first time competing in FD USA, a dream come true for the team without question. Drifting is a way of life in this town, in this country. I mean, their shop is literally next door, okay? I've gotta say, I was humbled by the whole experience, and it's something I won't soon forget. All right, so Daigo's shop is massive. I mean, here in Japan, the uh, the real estate is, it's pretty tight, especially around the greater Tokyo area. Um, but here we're about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Tokyo. Um, and the story I've heard is that Daigo, when he first came to compete in Formula Drift in America, he was kind of, you know, inspired and he really liked the way the Americans, funny enough, set up their shops. You know, here in Japan, you traditionally have specialized shops that do certain parts of the car, you know, fab, um, send it off to paint, various setups, uh, and then bring it back to the shop to kind of do the fine tuning uh, and get it ready for your drift events. But he has taken the American approach of just having everything in one shop. So it's, it is huge here. You have so many cars. I mean, you've got shipping containers all behind me. Um, so it's, it's really quite something. It's a all in one shop. Uh, you can see this trailer right here. <laughs> This is his Liberty Walk 458. Um, and Sky was telling me that he kind of, he built this and uh, drove it around for a bit and then was like, eh, I'll, you know, I'd, <laughs> I'll build some Supras, 86s, uh, and a lot of Corvettes. He loves Corvettes. There is a C6 Corvette in there. Uh, the engine nicknamed Big Boy, that makes 900 horsepower naturally aspirated. Wrap your head around that, that's crazy. <laughs> so, it's a really cool car here. Lots to see. So I believe these cars are actually gonna be going down to Formula Drift Long Beach in May. Obviously it's a long way to take cars down there. You gotta ship all your cars, your crew, everything, tire changers, whatnot. Um, and you don't get much practice either. So that's the thing. When you go down there, all these Japanese teams are at a major disadvantage um, because they don't have the luxury of, you know, when the, uh, before the event and everything, going to different tracks, practicing different setups uh, and changing the car. Um, whereas these cars basically have to be perfectly set up before they leave the country. I think this is uh, S13? Looks like an S13. The 2Js pushed way back into the chassis, far, far behind where the front axles are. You see here, it's basically a front mid-mounted engine set up right here. This one's a little bit more raw than the Supra's over there. Oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy. C6 Corvette. Got a bunch of LS engines here. Oh, look at this. Look at that. What do you think, Will? So dope. <laughs> yep, so dope. <laughs> So as you can see behind me, Daigo has completely embraced Toyota this season for Formula Drift and D1 GP here in Japan. So all these Toyotas behind me, the 86 and the two Supras back here, and this isn't all of them, uh, have been fitted and are being built for this, uh, this year's Formula Drift Championship. Uh, and Daigo will be heading back, I, I believe so, uh, to Long Beach this spring for the first time to compete in four years. He hasn't been back in four years. Uh, as you can see, all two Jay-Z's in the Supers back there. Pretty insane to see in person. Um, <laughs> the amount of trophies up on the wall. Uh, it is a full-scale operation here. The shop is huge. It would take forever to cover everything. Um, but these cars are world-class drift cars. The top-tier drift cars in the world right now. Uh, and we are in the heart of Japan right here in, in the flesh. It doesn't seem real. <laughs> So as you can see, major cooling in the back here. Major cooling. This Supra is getting a wide body kit. 
believe that's a Rocket Bunny wide body kit on this Supra here. Same carbon fiber. Cooling back here, radiator, huge radiator. Full carbon fiber and everything. And of course, you guys, once again, we've run into Mark. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were there in Vancouver, and now we're here. And then we, I see you everywhere. I like, know. Every day we're seeing different stuff. This is quite an experience. I mean, rarely do we get a chance to get into a pro drifter, not only one, but one of the best, and seeing what they're building and one of the forefronts of technologies. Absolutely, um, Building yeah. drift cars. I mean, it's just such a, so, such an advanced, you know, thing today. And it's just insane. Like, I'm just an eye-opening experience looking into what they're doing it's it, like it doesn't feel real <laughs> yeah that's that's it why i'm like I, I don't even have words to describe just looking at the brand new things i mean wow i didn't know that technology is so advanced today with how light stuff can be mm -hmm. and i mean they've already got full carbon doors uh like sky was saying for the new supra it's very like, built, <laughs> yeah it's it's built for a purpose yeah. right it's absolutely functions over form it's really about what it is and the rest is just sponsorships and anything else the rest of it it's just a car that drifts yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what it is so such an amazing thing i mean i wasn't a super like a super fan of the new supra Me either Me until either. just like the past two days yeah. when I see so yeah. many nice body Supra and honestly not like if I compare this to like a professional drift car right. this really sold it I mean looking at how the chassis stands yes. and, the, and how they can build the stuff in the back and yeah. the weight and I think this is a really functional car for competing on the highest level and seeing that makes me really want to get one now it, it feels like this is its natural habitat correct. this new car correct. you know it has potential yeah see that even like the mark 4 supra it doesn't that doesn't seem to fit into the drifting world quite as well it's me. a bit it's a bit of a gt kind of high horse mm -hmm. power straight line yeah, car yeah. and seeing this kind of with this stance with such wide kind of angle and cambers in the front and being able to have a balanced drift it, it just it, it speaks to it now this car is a complete car where you can build it for road for track purposes yeah. or for drifting it can be anything I love the two J's too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's better than a Beamer engine, let's be real. <laughs> this is so reliable and so well. Yeah. This, this is the poop. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, it's gonna make for the show. So, unfortunately, guys, I don't think we're gonna be able to film with Charles and his R34 GTR this time in Japan. But we already have plans uh, of potentially coming back in July. <laughs> so uh, he's gonna have different mods on the car and we're gonna go for a drive. Luckily, Charles is local to Vancouver. Uh, so I do see him quite often back in the mainland, back home. So, oh my God, beautiful. But get ready for that because next time we're in Japan, that is going to be an insane video. Boom, and there you go, you guys. Daigo shop uh, here just outside of Tokyo, Japan. I honestly, I still can't believe it. Um, I took a huge leap coming here to Japan. Um, I only had a couple of things planned here, car related things planned here. To be completely honest, before I left, um, we were planning to go see Nikai Sun at RWB HQ with friend of the show Sid. We did that for the New Year's party, uh, which we actually missed because our flights were delayed, but that's a whole whole other story um, and then uh, I'm actually shooting a video for Sid's Koi business so that's why we're going up north I'm about to catch a bullet train to go do that but other than that I really didn't have many other car plans here but as uh, as I've experienced and as I've learned over the past with different travels that we've been on um, across North America is that once you go somewhere you end up meeting people I mean we all speak the automotive language we all speak car right so I ended up meeting people um, Sid introduced me to Sky owner of Drift Academy in New Zealand uh, so 
maybe a New Zealand trip at some point. Um, <laughs> so he brought us out here. Thank you so much, Sky. I can't thank you enough, honestly. Uh, check out the Drift Academy YouTube channel. The link is in the description. He'll be covering a bunch of stuff uh, as well as in New Zealand. He does a bunch of drift events over there. You can go check out Mark Wang, his app Car Meets as well. He's here. Charles Wong, you guys know from Vancouver, CW Collective on YouTube um, and CW Unit on Instagram. I met Jack from Ultramotive as well. He's here too. Uh, so check out all their links are in the description. Top tier drifters right here in Japan. It doesn't get any better, you guys. So smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And here continues our adventures in Japan. I'll see you guys next time.